time I see another, another breaking of the day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whenever I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you.
Love visit your people. Put a mark of exemption upon everyone. In Jesus' glorious name. Our Heavenly Father, take all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. In Jesus' glorious name. Your word to us this hour. And let everyone be blessed. As your word go forth, let the healing virtue in the word go forth. Let everybody be lifted today. By the power in the word and in the anointing oil. Break every yoke of bondage. In Jesus' glorious name. Liberate your people by the power of their anointing this morning. In Jesus' glorious name. It is my new dawn ever. Please help me welcome your neighbor to the left. And and as you have your seat in his presence. What a joy having every one of us again in this second service. It has been a rainy day since yesterday. The day has been so wonderful. Habit, we thank God that you are here today. One of the reasons I'm happy there is something God has made me to understand. Because this is the first time we, since I came here we see rain like this. For the rain, for the rain to happen this way and we see this wonderful men and women in church. They showed to me maturity. That I'm pastoring matured men and women. Praise the Lord. I've been in a, in a place many years ago. There one early, morning, early Sunday morning. I can't forget that play, uh, that day, August 1st, 2010. I, I was pastoring a church far away, uh, just. Uh, Bauchi State in Nigeria. And you and cat and dog that day. I came to church that time with rain. Reaching the office. And I was even to the extent that the church started by eight. It was difficult to see anyone because there was so much no car on the way. And, and someone coming. Say, Pastor, is there going to be service today? <laughs> is there going to be service today? Praise the Lord. And this service that it was wonderful. We have to shift service from 8 to 8 30 in order for people to come. We are not seeing such a But for this part, it is still raining up in now. Many of us came with the rain. I want you that that rain that touch you is not just ordinary rain. It shall be a shower of blessing. And not hearing a louder amen. It shall turn to you for a testimony. God is pleased that you are here this morning. And you will not go back this And he said you will not go back this In Jesus' name. And that's also one of the reasons as a church we pray. For perfect weather in all our services. There are many people that are supposed to be here, both in first service and second service. But because of the rain, there are many places where people are living. In this time, that if it rains, it, it, it becomes difficult to come out. Even with car. You know I'm saying the truth. There are most places that people are living in this town that it, it is difficult to come out when it is rain. And that's why we are committed to pray for perfect weather. For the weather to be perfect for people to come and receive God's blessings. There are people that they are in the house now. 
Kuna watu wako nyumbani kwenye nyumba. Lakini mioyo yao iko hapo. Lakini wamejaribu katika namna yote lakini imeshindikana kuja hapa. Na kila mmoja atawajibika katika kila ibada. Kuombea hali njema ya hewa. Yakobo 4:17. Genesis chapter 4 verse 17 Yakobo 4:17 uh, to tell you that uh, when answers to prayer inakuonyesha wazi kwamba mvua inajibu unapoomba Is it Genesis uh, that's Genesis chapter 4 Ni Yakobo That's where we normally pray to pray Mara ambako uaga tunatumia ile andiko kuomba Praise the Lord Bwana asifiwe. Okay, Genesis chapter 5. Ni Yakobo 5. Genesis chapter 5 verse ya, 17. Yakobo 5:17. Elijah, that's Elias. Elia was a man subject with passion as we are. Alikuwa mwanadamu mwenye tabia moja na sisi. And he prayed. Akaomba earnestly. Kwa bidii that it might not rain. Kwamba mvua isinyeshe. And it rained not on the earth na haikunyesha mvua juu ya nchi by the space of 3 years and 6 months kwa muda wa miaka mitatu na miezi sita and he prayed again akaomba tena and the heaven gave rain mbingu zikatoa mvua and the earth brought forth her fruit na hiyo nchi kazaa matunda yake look at that verse 17 tazama mstari wa 17 i like the introduction the writer of that's a apostle james use napenda utangulizi ambao mtume yakobo has the same passion as we are. Alisema Elia alikuwa na tabia you know, moja kama sisi. Nothing is different between us and Elijah. Kwa maana nyingine hakuna tofauti baina yetu sisi na Elia. By what Jesus said. Kwa kile ambacho Yesu alisema. If you read like uh, uh, Matthew chapter 11 verse 11. Matthew you know, he was talking about that. Was, nobody moja. greater than Solomon in his time but he that is least in the kingdom is now greater than him. That's John the Baptist. Alik- he talk about Solomon also. Alizungumza kwa habari ya Suleman na Yohana Mbatizaji akisema I have heard God's servant say that everyone born again. Asa kila aliyeokoka he has more potential than any of the people we celebrate in the Old Testament. Anaweza na nguvu kuliko watu wote tunaowasherekea katika agano la kale. Elijah prayed. Kama Elia aliomba The Bible says there is nothing we have the same passion we can pray. Biblia nasema tuna tabia moja kama hivyo tunaweza kuomba. Aliomba kwamba isinyeshe. We can pray that this Sunday it will not rain. Tunaweza na sisi kuomba kwamba Jumapili mvua isinyeshe. Which what happened today is an assignment to every one of us. Kilichotokea leo ni jukumu ambalo kila mmoja amepewa. Sunday service every of us have pray the lord it will not rain ibada zetu zinapokuwa basi hakikisha unaomba mvua isinyeshe anytime even on sunday kila wakati kinyesha jumapili all over the world ulimwenguni mote there are people the rain will stop from coming kuna watu walizuia mvua isinyeshe maybe there are those who are not committed to god nasikana kuna wale ambao hajajitoa kwa mungu who say oh it have rain wanasema kwamba imenyesha oh thank god it is rain and not going anywhere today wengine wanamshukuru mungu kwamba tunamshukuru mungu imenyesha stand up popote there are many people they can help it Kuna, kuna watu wengi wamejaribu kwa namna yoyote ile lakini wameshindwa. Bwana asifiwe. Get this assignment today and continue to do so. Jukumu lako hili leo lipokee na uendelee kufanya hivyo. Your prayer can stop rain from falling. Maombi yako yanaweza kuzuia mvua isinyeshe. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Wisdom from above makes high flyers. Hekima itokayo juu inawafanya watu kupaa juu. Our prophetic focus for the month. Ilo ndilo lango la kinabila mwezi huu. And in our services we have been looking at on the way to our promised land. Katika ibada zetu tunatazama masomo njiani kuelekea katika nchi ya ahadi. To be. Sehemu ya pili B. On the way to our promised land. Njiani kuelekea katika nchi yetu ya ahadi. I take my test again from Genesis chapter 50 verse 24. Nachukua andiko letu tena katika ile Mwanzo amsini Joseph told his brothers. Yule Yusuf aliwaambia ndugu zake. He say I die. Akasema nakufa. And God will surely visit you. Na hakika Mungu atawatembelea. And when God visit you. Na Mungu akiwatembelea. He will bring you out of this land. Atawatoa kwenye nchi hii. Into the land which he is where to Abraham. Na kuwapeleka kwenye nchi aliyo mwapia Ibrahim. There is a land we are going to. Kuna nchi ambayo tunaiendea. God have told his servant Bishop Gabriel about concerning it. Mungu amemwambia mtumishi wake asikofeere pokusiana hiyo nchi. And it is divine visitation for us to reach to that land. Na inahitaji 
tutembelewe kiungu ili tuweze kufika nchi hiyo. The land is not just a particular country or nation. Nchi hiyo sio nchi fulani au taifa fulani. When we talk about promised land. Tunapozungumzia nchi ya ahadi. We talking about moving to a worthy place. Inamaanisha kwamba kuelekea mahali pa utajiri. We talk about going to possess what belongs to us. Tunazungumzia kwenda kumiliki kile ambacho ni mali yetu. We talk about going to a land of divine health. Tunazungumzia kwenda kwenye nchi au ardhi ya Mungu. There is no sickness or disease. Ardhi ambayo hakuna magonjwa wala madhaifu. That is going to the way where we enjoy health as God enjoys. Yaani maana yake ni kwenda kwenye viwango ambao tunafurahia afya. Promised land. Tunapozungumzia nchi ya ahadi. We talking about our land of our land of financial breakthroughs our land of favor it does not matter what we are going to now we are on the way going to our promised land somebody shout hallelujah if you are going to anywhere there are places you will pass through Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. There are things you will pass through. Kuna vitu utavipita. You might even have when you are traveling. Wakati unasafiri. You might even have uh, uh, traffic on the way. Inawezekana ukakuta foleni njiani. You might even even have a punctured tire. Unaweza kukuta taini imepasuka kwa bahati mbaya. It will not stop you from reaching your destination. Lakini haitakuzuia wewe kufikia kule unakwenda. There is a place you are going to. Kuna mahali unakwenda. And no devil will stop you from reaching there. Na kuna shetani atakakuzuia kufika. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. 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 That is why Bishop Bey said some time ago. Ndo maana Scofabio alisema wakati fulani huko nyuma. If you know where you are going to. Kama unajua unakoenda. You will not be bothered of what you are going to. Hautasumbuka kwa kile unachokipitia. If you know where you are going to. Kama unajua wapi wewe unakwenda. You will not be bothered of what you are going to. Hautasumbuka kwa kile unachokipitia njiani. Don't be bothered of what you are going to. Usisumbuliwe na kile unachopitia njiani. There is a place you are going. Kuna mahali unaenda. You must possess your possession. Lazima umiliki miliki yako. Don't be bothered of what you are going to. Usisumbuliwe na kile unachopitia sasa. Don't be bothered of any attack of the devil. Usisumbuke na mashambulizi ya ibilisi shetani. God is bringing you into that affliction. Mungu anakutoa kwenye hayo mateso. The Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 19. Bible inasema katika Zaburi 34:19 are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered them deliver him out of them all lakini bwana anawaokoa kutoka kwenye mateso yote you might be in one kind of affliction or the other unaweza unapita kwenye teso moja ama jingine don't ever think that god does not know about it jam hakuna kitu ambacho mungu akijua in exodus chapter 7 verse 7 to 10 kutoka 3 7 mpaka 10 god was watching the children of Israel suffered in the land of Egypt. Mungu alikuwa anawatazama wana wa Israeli Na anajua kabisa hakuwa mpango wa Mungu kwao. only destined that they will pass through Egypt. Mungu alikusudia tu kwamba wapite in the land of Egypt for 700 for 400 years. Wataka nchi ya Misri kwa miaka 400. But the the God of Egypt entered into favor the wars. Lakini Mungu yule alishuka You, you know how Israel Israel like came to Egypt. Unajua namna gani wa Israel walienda Misri? Joseph. Walikwenda Misri kupitia Egypt. From Potiphar's house to prison kutoka kwa Potiphar gerezani gerezani mpaka ikulu. But a kind a time came. Lakini wakati ukafika. When Pharaoh that does not know Joseph arose. Mala ambako Pharaoh mwingine asiyemjua Yusuf. All manner of injuries on God's people. Alianza kuwatesa watu wa Mungu kwa mateso mengi. And they were walking like an elephant eating like an ant. Walikuwa wanafanya kazi kama tembo na wanakula kama mbu. They were walking Egyptians were eating. Walikuwa wanafanya kazi wao wa Misri walikuwa wanakula. Not was walking for them. Hakuna kitu kwa wanatenda kazi kwao. They were walking and crying to God. Walikuwa wanapenya so wanatenda kazi wakilia kwa Mungu. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob where were you? Wakamlilia Mungu wa Ibrahimu, Isaka na Yakobo huko wapi? Is it your agenda for us? Je, haya mateso ni mpango wako kwetu? I don't know why God kept quiet. Sijui kwa nini Mungu alinyamaza. Every time you see The blessing is delayed. Wakati wote unapona baraka imechelewa. It is because God is preparing a bigger one for you. Sasa Mungu anaandaa baraka kubwa kwa ajili yako. Maybe the, the testimony of the Israelites coming out of Egypt. Ushuhuda ule wa wana wa Israeli walotoka Misri. Who have not been great at Israel. Inaizik- if God came at that year or even before the year he proposed. Ingewezekana ule ushuhuda usiwe mkubwa kama Mungu angetokea mapema. But allow them to pass through that trial. Mungu aliwaruhusu wapite kwenye ile jaribu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He have not forgotten you no matter the trial you are facing. Mungu aje kusahau haijalishi jaribu unalopitia. He want people to hear your testimony. Anataka watu wasikie ushuhuda wako. He want your faith in him to be agile. Don't give up. Anataka imani yako kwake iwe imara usikate tamaa. One day God came. Nobody really reminded him again. 
kuna siku Mungu akaja hakuna mtu aliwaza kwamba atashuka aliamua kushuka and he met Moses na akamkuta Musa in Exodus chapter 12 verse 7 kutoka 3:7 i have seen the affliction of my people nimeona mateso ya watu wangu Exodus chapter 12 verse 7 kutoka 3:7 mpaka 10 i have surely seen hakika nimeona from this creature go see kupitia andiko hili tunatambua Mungu anaona i say and i have heard their cry nimesikia na kilio chao Mungu anasikia your prayer god is here maombi yako Mungu anasikia please don't give up one day you will see the testimony usikate tamaa siku moja utaona ushuhuda testimony is never than your testimony ushuhuda wako uko karibu kuliko unavyoanza please don't give up on god tafadhali usikate tamaa kwa Mungu he sees he hears anaona na nasikia he knows your soul anajua uzuni yako you, you would, nobody might know no matter how you explain it hakuna mtu anaweza kujua hata you know, ukielezea namna gani they said that he that wears a shoe knows where he pinches Asa, anaevaa kiatu na anajua wapi kina no mama no matter how you explain it to someone he might not understand yalishi namna gani unamueleza mtu anaweza sielewa but god knows your soul za Mungu anajua uzuni yako and he say i have come down na anasema nimeshuka i have come down to deliver them out of the land of egypt nimeshuka kuwakomboa kutoka katika nchi ya misri God delivers you to take you to your promised land. Mungu anakukomboa ili akupeleke kwenye nchi ya ahadi. And to bring them up. Na kuwapeleka juu. You might be down now. Lazima udhamirie. But God is bringing you up. Kwamba Mungu anakupeleka juu. I say God is bringing you up. Mungu anakupeleka juu sasa. You are coming out of Egypt. Unatoka kutoka Misri. And when you come out of Egypt you are going up. Unatoka kutoka Misri unakwenda mbele. And no hear me louder you man. Sikia mimi nakubwa. And he shall bring you up to that land. Na wapeleka kwenye ile nchi. It was not an ordinary land. Sio nchi ya kawaida. And he said into a good land and a large. Anasema katika nchi kubwa njema. Into a land njema. flowing with milk and honey. Nchi ina umiminika maziwa na asali. That is a land flowing with milk and honey God is taking you to. Mungu anakupeleka kwenye nchi inayotirika maziwa na asali. The people of Israel passed through affliction. Watu wa Israel walipita mateso. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. But later. Lakini mwisho they reach the promised land wakafika nchi ya ahadi you will reach your promised land utafika nchi yako ya ahadi that blessing will get your hand baraka hiyo itafika mkono mwako no devil will stop you hakuna shetani atakayezuia god visited his people mungu aliwatembelea watu wake we are in a season of divine visitation na tuko katika majira ya kutembelewa kwa mungu and every divine visitation will result to transformation of life kila mtembeleo wa kimungu unapelekea mabadiliko ya maisha and when we talk about a divine visitation we talk about revival tunapozungumzia mtembeleo wa kiungo tunazungumzia Tuko katika majira ya uamsho kama uduma. God have visited his people. Mungu ametembelea watu wake. Zephaniah chapter 10 verse 17. Zephaniah 3:17. The Bible said the Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. Bwana katika tienu ni mwenye nguvu hodari. He will save. Ataokoa. He will rejoice over thee with joy. Atakufurahia kwa furaha. He will rest in his love. Atapumzika katika pendo lake. He will joy over you with singing. Atakufurahia kwa kuimba. Verse 18 says. Sura 18:18. I will God that then they are so full for a solo assembly. Nitawakusanya wale wenye huzuni. Who who are of thee? Ambao to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Wamepata mateso na mzigo. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. And he said behold at that time. Anasema tazama katika wakati huo. I will undo all that afflict thee. Nitawatesa wanaokutesa. This is what happened when God visits. Hichi ndio kinatokea Mungu akitembea. Everyone that afflict you because comes under the curse of God. And he said and I will save her that hurted. Nitamuokoa yule atesekaye. Gata ha that was driven out. Na kumkusanya yule aliyefukuzwa. And I will get them praise and fame in every land. Nitawapatia sifa na heshima. We are the happy to shame. Katika kila nchi waliopata aibu. Any time God visit. Popote Mungu anapotembelea. Your shame is turned to your testimony. Aibu yako inageuzwa kwa ushuhuda. Your shame and reproach is turned to glory. Fedha yako inageuka kwa utukufu. Wait when it is wisdom to know the time we are in ndugu ni hekima kutambua majira tuliyopo sasa indeed we are in a revival hakika tuko katika majira ya uamsho praise the lord bwana asifiwe we have seen testimonies tumeona shuhuda we have heard testimonies tumesikia shuhuda since this revival began wa, tangu uamsho umeanza very soon na kitambo tu your testimony will show people that we are in a revival shuhuda wako tadhirisha watu kwamba uko kwenye uamsho i said very soon kitambo tu your testimony will show people that we are in a revival shuhuda wako tadhirisha watu kwamba uko kwenye uamsho you are hearing other people's testimony tumesikia shuhuda za watu wengine very soon people will hear your testimony kitambo tu wako tasikia shuhuda wako if i'm talking to you shout to me god yeah sema amen na kubwa But what is a revival? Lakini nini maana ya uamsho? What is a revival? Nini maana ya uamsho? A revival is a move of the spirit. Uamsho ni mtembeo wa roho. 
that baptizes believers with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Ambayo inawabatiza waamini na ile roho ya kumcha Mungu. Thereby empowering us to seek to please God at all times. Na hivyo kutuwezesha kutamani kumpendeza Mungu wakati wote. Is a move of the spirit. Ni mtembeo wa roho. And this move of the spirit baptizes us with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Na mtembeo wa roho unatubatiza na ile roho ya kumcha Mungu. We fear God like Britain. Maana ambako tunamcha Mungu kawaida kama kupumua. Have any difficulty in walking in the fear of the Lord. Atupati ugumu kutembea katika kumcha Mungu. That's one of the things that characterizes revival. Hivyo ndio sifa moja wapo ya uamsho. We are people's Hearts are breaking they don't want to disobey God. Mala ambako mioyo ya watu inadunda hawataki kumkosea Mungu. We have people walk in obedience to the commandment of God. Mala ambako watu wanatembea wakitii maagizo ya Mungu. Bwana asifiwe. I say praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 11:1 na 2. God pours in the revival is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Kitu kimoja kinachopatikana kwenye uamsho ni ile roho ya kumcha Mungu. Verse say the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Roho bwana atakaju yake. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. Roho ya shauri na uweza. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Roho ya na ya kumcha Mungu. This is what characterizes revival. Hizi ndio sifa za uamsho. We are walk in the fear of the Lord as a lifestyle. Maana ambako tunatembea katika kumcha Bwana kama tabia yetu. The fear of the Lord. Tunamtumikia Mungu katika kumcha Bwana. This what makes our services to be acceptable. Ni ili utumishi wetu ukubalike. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 12 verse 28. Biblia inasema katika Hebrew 12:28. Let us receive grace that we might serve God acceptably. Tumpokee neema ili tumtumikie Mungu akubalika. He say with reverence and godly fear. Anasema katika kuhofu na kutetemeka. With reverence and godly fear. Katika hofu na kutetemeka. You need this fear of the Lord. Unahitaji hofu hii ya Mungu. When you don't fear God you can be exempted by God. Unapokuwa aumchi Mungu hauwezi kuepushwa na Mungu. God, evil will not fear you. Unapokuwa aumchi Mungu mabaya hizi kuogopa. Unapokuwa God devil will not fear you. Unapokuwa aumchi Mungu mapepo yatakuogopa. Na mashetani wanamjua anaemcha Mungu. The fear of God is not about coming to church. Kumcha Mungu sio habari ya kuja kanisani. Many people are in church they don't fear God. Watu wengi wa kanisani hawamchi Mungu. They do a lot of things in the church. Wanafanya vitu vingi kanisani. There is no fear of God. Lakini hawana hofu ya Mungu. Before when you see a Christian what announce mercy me Christian is the fear of God in him. Kinachomfanya mtu kuwa mkristo ni ile hofu ya Mungu ndani yake. When they are walking in office they say no no no. This one if fear God he won't join in signing that receipt. Wanasema unapoingia ofisini anasema mtu huyu kama anamcha Mungu asinge sign ile receipt. He cannot cheat in examination. Mtu huyu anamcha Mungu hawezi kudanganya kwenye mtihani. People will not fear you until you fear God. Watu hawatakuogopa mpaka umeanza kumcha Mungu. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. And it is my prayer that the fear of God, the spirit of the fear of God. Ni ombi langu kwamba roho ya kumcha Mungu come upon every one of us in this life. Itakuja wetu katika wakati wa wamsho. You fear God. Utamcha Mungu. Making it as a lifestyle. Itakuwa kama kawaida yako ya kuishi. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. The writer of Ecclesiastes, the king himself. Mwandishi wa ile muhubiri mfalme mwenyewe. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 and 14. Muhubiri 11. He said let us hear therefore the conclusion of the matter. Na sasa hili ni hitimisho. Fear God. Mche Mungu. And keep his commandment. Na tunza amri zake. For this is the whole duty of man. Kwa maana hii ndio inampasa mwanadamu. Maana Mungu kila kazi ataileta kwenye hukumu. Kila kitu cha siri. Kiwe kizuri ama kibaya. Hiyo picha za ngono unazoangalia Mungu anaona. Simu yako imejaa picha za ngono. One hand with photography, another hand raising it to God. Upande mwingine ngono, upande mwingine unainua kwa Mungu. Maybe you came to this service today from a, 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 a house of a man that is not your husband. Labda umekuja kwenye ibada leo umetoka kwenye nyumba ya mume mwingine. Na unaona kama Mungu hajakuona. It is not a sign of revival. Wewe inamaanisha huko kwenye uamsho. You need to change. Unaibidi ubadilike. Lying in hypocrisy have taken over the church. Kudanganya ule ndumila kuwili umechukua kanisa. For they say I know he cannot say a lie. Kipindi cha hicho anasema Mkristo hawezi kusema uongo. Lakini siku hizi watu wanasema uongo wanaundumila kuili. Ile hofu ya Mungu imepotea kanisani. Bwana asifiwe. I say praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. In first first Timothy chapter 4 verse 2. Timotheo wa kwanza sura ya 4 mstari wa 2. Dhamiri za watu zimekufa. In hypocrisy. Wengine wanaongea uongo. Having their conscience stay with a hot iron. Having their conscience is dead. Zamiri zao zimekufa. 
doing things that are bad and you are rejoicing over it. Wanatenda mambo ya uovu. This is not the Christianity we inherited. Uo sio Ukristo ambao tumeurithi. We inherited a Christianity whereby if a Christian makes a mistake of lying. Tumeurithi Ukristo ambapo mtu akikosea akisema uongo. Over crying. Atalia. Even crying to me sir, I lie today. A- God forgive me. Atalia akisema I lie today. Nimedanganya leo Mungu nisamee. He lie. Andanganya. But today people come to the altar and lie. Lakini leo watu wanakuja madhabahuni wanadanganya. See all sorts of lies. Wakisema uongo wa namna zote. Maybe in order to attract ovation. Labda ili kuvuta kibali fulani. We must go back to the drawing board. Inapaswa uende kwa Mungu. And look at the Christianity handed over to us. Na kutazama ule Ukristo tuliopokea. Not this kind of end time Christianity today. So Ukristo wa nyakati za mwisho tuliokuwa nao leo. People are hiding under grace and doing a lot of atrocities. Watu wanatumia neema kama kigezo cha kufanya uovu wa kila namna. Apostle Paul said shall we continue to send that grace my above. Mtume Paulo anasema je, tuendelee kutenda dhambi kwa sababu neema imekuwa nyingi? God forbid. Anasema Mungu epushia mbali. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. You know in, in Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Tito 2:11. The Bible says the grace of God that bringeth salvation. Biblia inasema neema ya Mungu iletea wokovu. Appear to every one of us. Imefunuliwa kwa kila mmoja wetu. Appear to every man. Imefunuliwa kwa kila mmoja. This is not a license to sin. Grace is not a license to Ile sin. Ile neema sio kama kibali cha wewe kutenda dhambi. Verse 12 mstari wa 11 na 12 this grace is teaching us hekima hii inatufundisha teaching us that denying ungodliness tukatae uchafu and worldly loss na tamaa za dunia that we should live soberly ili tuishi sahihi righteously katika haki and godly kiungu in this present world katika ulimwengu wa sasa this is what the grace is all about neema inahusiana na mambo haya it is not a covering for sin sio kama ni kigezo au kifuniko cha kutenda dhambi grace to fear him mungu ame Praise the Lord. There is no sin you cannot say no to because of the grace of God. Hakuna dhambi ambayo huwezi kuikataa kwa sababu ya neema ya Mungu. If you fall into sin is because you are you you permitted it. Ukianguka kwenye dhambi ni kwa sababu umeruhusu. The season of revival is a season of the fear of the Lord. Majira ya uamsho ni majira ya kumcha Mungu. It is time for the church to sing. Ni wakati wa kanisa. I don't know Maybe this morning you are drinking about two bottles of alcohol before you come. Sijui asubuhi ya leo inawezekana umekunywa chupa mbili za pombe kabla hujaje hapa. And you use sweet and and paste to clean your mouth. Let people not know. Na umetumia mswaki na nini ili God watu wasijue. Shall bring every secret in in judgment. Mungu ataleta kila jambo la sirini kwenye hukumu. Nobody might know but God watch. Hakuna mtu anaweza kujua lakini Mungu anatazama. It is for your benefit to fear God. Ni kwa faida yako kumcha Mungu. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Do you know the reason many people cannot evangelize? Unajua sababu ambayo watu wengi kwa nini hawafanyi evangelism? Especially in their neighborhood. Ni kwa wanafanya hawafanyi kwa pale jirani. seen the person as a Christian. Ni kwa sababu majirani hawajawahi kumuona mtu huyo kama Mkristo. And did you know many people hide their bible coming to church? Unajua watu wengi wanaficha biblia wanapokuja kanisani. They will hold only one phone. Wata, Even when they ask them, are you coming to church? Watabeba tu simu. Ukimuuliza wanakuja kanisani? They would deny they are not coming to church. Wanadanganya waje kanisani. Because your neighbor say, oh this one does he go to church? Kwa sababu majirani wangesema mtu huyu kweli anakwenda kanisani. Because your character does not show that you are a winner. Tabia yako haionyeshi kama wewe ni mshindi. You need to change. Unahitaji kubadilika. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. One thing you must know we are here to tell you nothing but the truth. Kitu kimoja tunapaswa kutambua tuko hapa kukuambia ukweli. We don't condone sin. Hatufuniki wala kubembeleza dhambi. This is a wonderful church we don't condone sin. Hili ni kanisa zuri atupambi dhambi. You have to stop. Lazima uache. For this fire of revival to burn in your life. Ili moto huo wa mwisho uwake katika maisha yako. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. Sema hallelujah kubwa. What What do I stand again in this revival? Tunanufaika nini katika uamsho huu? In other words, what is in this revival for? Kwa maneno mengine, ninapata nini kwenye uamsho? Among other things we have said. Miongoni mwa vitu vingi ambavyo tumesema. Now, everlasting mountains cleared the way in the revival. We say everlasting mountains clears the way in the revival. Tunasema ile milima ya milele inapotea katika wakati wa uamsho. 
divine favor in a revival. Na hiyo inaonyesha kwamba tuko kwenye uamshi. I want to add also that we enjoy divine protection in a revival. Nataka kuongeza kigezo kingine kwamba tunafurahia ulinzi wa kiungo wakati wa uamshi. Luka 10 verse 17 to 19. Luka 10:17 mpaka 19. In a revival God send Jesus send them and they went and preach. Yesu aliwatuma wakaenda kuhubiri. And when they return, you see even the devil we are subject unto thy name. Waliporudi walisema hata mapepo yanatutii kwa jina lako. Jesus said in this revival I have beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Yesu akasema katika uamsho huu nimemwona shetani akianguka kutoka mbinguni kama umeme. I give you power. Tazama nimewapa amri. To tread upon scorpion and serpent. Na nguvu ya kukanyaga nyoka na nje. And every power of the devil. Na nguvu zote za ule adui. Nothing shall by any means hurt. Wala kuna kitu kitakachowadhuru. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. In a revival the the, the, the anointing for protection is poured upon us. Wakati wa uamsho upako wa ulinzi una mimina kwetu. And also in a revival pia katika uamsho as we say also you enjoy favor also in a revival the rise of giant in us come out unapata kibali lakini pia kwenye uamsho ile jitu ndani yetu linaamka and also what do we enjoy in a revival na tunafurahia nini tena kwenye uamsho we enjoy divine exemption in a revival tunafurahia kuepushwa kiungu wakati wa uamsho revival time is exemption time wakati wa uamsho ni wakati wa kuepushwa when god visit his people kwa sababu mungu anapowatembelea watu wake he exempt them from the calamities and woes in the world anawaepusha kutoka kwenye majanga ya dunia in other words we are right in the center of the season of ascension in a body of Christ. Kwa maneno mengine tuko katikati ya ile majira ya uamsho ya Mungu. By this revival. Kwa uamsho huu God made our case to be different. Mungu anafanya swala letu ile tofauti. What other suffer we are not meant to suffer it. Kwamba kinachowatesa wengine sisi akiruhusiwi kutetesa. There is a covenant of ascension between every believer and God. Kuna agano la kuepushwa baina ya Mungu na mwamini. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. And I said in the first service. Nilisema kwenye ibada ya kwanza. Ascension talk about to free you from certain burdens and limitations. Kuepushwa maana yake ni kuwe kwa huru mbali na mizigo na vizuizi mbalimbali. The word ascension means to exclude somebody from certain things. Neno kuepushwa maana yake kumtenga mtu kutoka kwenye baadhi ya vitu. Everything happening in the world that is negative you are excluded. Kwamba kinachotokea duniani ambacho ni hasi au kibaya wewe unaepushwa unatengwa. That's why in our winners in a, in a winners family worldwide. Ndio maana katika familia washindi ulimwenguni mote. We are here to renew the mark of ascension. Tuko hapa kurudisha kwa upya ile alama ya kuepushwa. We are only coming to renew it. Tunafanya kunaifanya upya ile alama ya kuepushwa. Activate this covenant. Kufanya ile agano litende kazi kwa upya. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. For most of us who are coming who have never been part of ascension service. Wengi wetu ambao hamjawahi kushiriki ibada ya kuepushwa kama hii. Put it afresh on you. Inafanya kwa upya kuepushwa kwa. In Ezekiel chapter 4 9 verse 4 to 6. Ezekiel 9. There is a mark when it is upon your forehead. Inapokuepo juu ya uso wako what other suffer you will be exempted Kile kinachowatesa wengine uwe unaepushwa Somebody shout amen Sema amina And the Lord said unto him go to the midst of the city Bwana akamwambia nyenda kati ya mji To the midst of Jerusalem Katikati ya mji wa Yerusalemu And set a mark upon the forehead of men Ukati alama katika vipaji vya uso vya watu wanaugua. upon the forehead. Weka alama katika vipaji vya uso. We are setting a mark of ascension upon your forehead this morning. Tunaweka alama ya kuepusha uso ni pako. Kwa sababu Mungu ameagiza. And verse 5. Mstari wa 5. And because this such he say another he say in my hearing go after him to the city and na, smite. Na hao wengine sababu ya machukizo yote yanafanyika kati yake. Let not your eyes spare. Alisema piteni kati ya mji nyuma yake. Have you pity? Jicho lenu lisiachilie wala msiono huo. Angamizeni wote. To slay Kuua manake. Oh, he says stay utterly old and young. Anasema uweni wazee na kijana. Both men, mates. Msichana na watoto wadogo. Little children. Watoto wadogo. And women. Wanawake. Pets. Lakini there is a bot. Lakini that is exemption bot. Hiyo maana yake alama ya kuepushwa. Men others are not getting they say there is no job here. Wakati wengine wanasema hakuna kazi hapa. And God say bot, this is my daughter, give Mungu him a job. Mungu anasema lakini mwanangu huyu mpeni kazi. This is my son, give him a job. Mtoto wangu mpeni kazi. He say bot. Lakini anyone that have this mark. Msimkaribie mtu yeyote mwenye hiyo alama. Come not near. Msimkaribie. Any man. 
yeyote upon whom is the mark ambaye ana hiyo alama and begin at my sanctuary namwanzie patakatifu pangu begin at my sanctuary anzieni patakatifu pangu anyone that have this mark of essential yeyote mwenye hiyo alama ya kuepushwa devil have no power to touch you shetani ana nguvu ya kumgusa praise the lord bwana asifiwe i say praise the lord bwana asifiwe and not here with a bigger hey bad sisi amina kubwa this is what we come here to renew today Nicho ambacho tumekuja kukifanya upya hapa leo. Alama ya kuepushwa. We saw God. Tulimona Mungu. Putting a difference between the Israelites and the Egyptians. Akiweka tofauti baina ya Wamisri na Waisraeli. Today said there were about 10 plague God introduced in that land. Mpaka mahali ambako yani Mungu aliachilia mapigo 10. And the children of Israel did not experience any one of them. Na wana wa Israeli hawakupata hata pigo moja. The cattle in the land of Egypt, the same land. Nchi hiyo hiyo moja. It just like being in the same land of Dar es Salaam. Ni sawa na kuwa katika nchi moja ya Dar es Salaam. And there is a particular city called Goshen in that land. Na kuna mahali fulani panaitwa Gosheni katika nchi hiyo. And where people dwell. Mahali ambako watu wa Mungu wanakaa. And there is a darkness na kuna, in the land of Egypt. Na kuna giza katika nchi ya Misri. But in the land of Goshen there was light. Lakini kwenye nchi ya Gosheni kuna nuru. And God put it this way. Na Mungu akaweka namna hii. In Exodus. Ile kutoka. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. In Exodus chapter 8 verse 22 to 23. Kutoka 8:22:23. Exodus chapter he say I will save or I will make a difference. Nami sikio nikatenga the land of Goshen. Nchi ya Gosheni. In which my people dwell. Watu wangu wanayokaa. That no swarm of flies. Ili hao manzi shall be there. Wasifike huko. To the end that that may know that I am the Lord in the midst. That is visitation. I, I visited them. I'm in the midst of them. Ili wapate kujua Mungu ni Lord atembelea niko katikati yao. And that is revival. Na hiyo ni uamsho. And he said in verse 23. Msalo 23. I will put a division. Nami nitatia mpaka between my people. Kati ya watu wangu and thy people. Na watu wako. The word thy people represent Egyptians. Watu wako maana yake pale wa Misri. There is a division between God's people and the people of the world kuna mpaka kati ya watu wa Mungu na watu wa dunia you are not meant to suffer what they are suffering wewe haukusudii kuteseka wanachoteseka watu wa dunia praise the lord bwana asifiwe god have told us to me one time many years ago mtumishi wa Mungu alituambia habari fulani miaka iliyopita beginning many years he was living in a compound wakati akiwa anaishi kwenye nyumba fulani ndogo and he came out in the morning one day akatoka asubuhi siku moja almost everybody in the compound have been painted white kila mtu kwenye hiyo nyumba alikuwa amepaka rangi nyeupe you know uh, they had chicken pot kulikuwa kuna ule ugonjwa ule wa they, they ule everybody there wanaita una mapunye unatoa when it start with one person it affect hey, the other hey, person hey, hey. tete kuanga <laughs> praise the lord his own house the own family lakini kwenye familia yake tu in the same compound was exempted katika nyumba yake tu tete kuanga haikuingia understand that it was this covenant of essential ye alielewa ile agano la kuepushwa what others are suffering you are not meant to suffer it hapo kinachowatesa wengine akiruhusiwa kumtesa wewe last year was our year of my case is different mwaka jana ulikuwa mwaka wetu wa swala letu tofauti january last year there was a man of uh, dikim pata from patakot january mwaka jana kuna old deacon ni weshemas we like others and there was fire explosion alikwenda kuchukua mafuta kwenye kituo cha mafuta moto ukalipuka ukateketeza magari zaidi ya 20 na gari lake lilikuwa miongoni yale magari mengine every car they are born to kila gari liliungua pale but his own car was untouched lakini gari lake alikuguswa that man came to kenya to share his testimony mungu alirudi kana land kutoa ushuhuda and i have heard God's have make reference to that testimony over and over again na nimemsikia mtumishi akirudia huo ushuhuda tena na tena people we are surprised watu walishangaa the car in the front the car at the back the car surrounding his own car bonds gari loko mbele liloko nyuma na yaliyo mzunguka yote yameungua lakini gari lake peke yake liliepushwa the sticker of my case is different was in that car ile kadi ya swala langu ni tofauti ilikuwa kwenye gari hiyo security agents and everybody was surprised kila mtu alishangaa namna alivyoepushwa that was a confirmation of my year, my case is different ilo likuwa ni uthibitisho la kwamba swala langu ni tofauti oh, never left you say with that a witness mungu hajawahi kutuacha pastor ushuhuda please know that your case is different tafadhali leo kwamba swala lako ni tofauti praise the lord bwana asifiwe and not here in vega he is sikia mimi na kubwa but what must i do to activate this covenant lakini napaswa kufanya nini ili agano hili litende kazi kwangu if i have a covenant of ascension with god kama ninalo agano la kuepushwa na mungu you need to activate it inabidi uliamshe litende kazi i said it is says when you buy 
a SIM card of any telecommunication company. Nilisema kwenye baada ya kwanza ukinunua ile chip card ile ya simu ya kampuni yote. Sin of purchase. Haitendi kazi kwa sababu umeinunua. But you have to activate it before it work. Lazima uisajili ili uweze kutenda kazi. It does not work because you are purchasing. Haitendi kazi ile line ya simu kwa sababu umeinunua. Activate it. Lakini inabidi uisajili ili aanze kutenda kazi. For it to work. Ili uweze kutenda kazi. Otherwise you might have a car, a card and put it on a phone you can communicate to anybody. Lakini una kinyume na hapo unaweza kuona line umeweka kwenye simu na usiweze kuasiana na mtu. That's why this covenant need to be activated. Ndio maana ili agano linapaswa kuamshwa ili liwe hai. How do I activate it? Ninaliamshaje ili agano litende kazi kwangu? Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Number 1 let me see how I can go few before we call it there. Cha kwanza nione nipitie machache kabla tujafunga. Number 1. Cha kwanza he begin by having a uh, exemption mindset ina linatenda kazi pale unapoanza kuwa na ufahamu wa kuepushwa essential mindset kuwa na ule ufahamu wa kuepushwa essential is largely a function of your mindset kuepushwa kunategemeana sana na akili yako if you can if it cannot cross your mind kama haiwezi kupita kwenye akili yako it will never cross your life haiwezi kupita kwenye maisha yako you have to Paint it first from your mind. Inabidi kwanza upige picha kwenye akili yako. Your mentality is what determines the actual thing that happens to you. Akili yako kilichoko kwenye ufahamu ndio kinaamua nini kitokee kwako. To enjoy exemption. Ili ufaie kuepushwa. Your mind must be reordered. Akili yako lazima ifanye upya. You need to upia. renew your mind. Inabidi uifanye upya akili yako. There are a lot of things that put inside your mind. Kuna vitu vingi umeweka kwenye akili yako. You know uh, Philosophers told us that wana falsafa wametuambia the mind is a clean state at kwamba, birth kwamba akili inakuwa ni mahala patupu there was a, a, a philosopher named John Locke kuna mwana falsafa anaitwa John Locke he, he used the word tabula rasa alitumia neno hilo alilotaja that is a clean state yani maana yake ni eneo safi ambalo hakuna uchafu wote what we find in our mind now was put there it yeah. was not born with us chochote ambacho kiko kwenye akili yako sasa kiliwekwa akikuja na sisi born, mtoto anapozaliwa ubongo wake ni safi kabisa lakini akimtazama mama na mazingira anaomzunguka akitazama watu wanaanza kuweka vitu kwenye akili yake anapopita makundi ya marafiki kanisani television na vitu vya namna hiyo and those he put a lot of things in mind vitu hivyo vinapanda vitu vingi katika akili yako and when you get born again na unapookoka those things in their mind does not go around that vitu hivyo akilini havipotei kirahisi if you have put evil in your mind after surrendering it will not go kama umeweka mabaya akilini mwako ukishatoa maisha yako kwa Yesu haitaondoka your mind is like a computer akili yako ni kama kompyuta what you put in the computer is what will stay unachoweka kwenye kompyuta ndicho kitakachokaa unless you delete it labda mpaka umefuta your mind is not born again we never be akili yako haijaokoka na haitakaiokoke man is a spirit mwanadamu ni roho that has a soul mind and lives in a body ana nafsi na anaishi ndani ya mwili the only one the one that is born again is a spirit kinachookoka katika hizo vitatu ni roho tu take responsibility ndo maana inabidi uchukue wajibu sasa to delete everything you have stored in your mind and put the word of god in your mind kufuta kila kitu ulichoweka kwenye akili yako na uweke neno la mungu kwenye akili yako romans chapter 12 verse 2 say we knew in your mind ebrania warumi 12 mstari wa kwanza nasema kuuisha akili zenu to be new means making something new again kuuisha maana yake kufanya kitu kwa kipya Praise the Lord. That's why most of the time you think the way you think because of the stuff in your mind. Ndio maana mara nyingi unawaza unavuaza kwa sababu ya vitu viko katika akili yako. Many people have put something in their mind they never believe they can be exempted. Watu wengi wameweka kitu kwenye akili yao na hawaamini kwamba wanaweza kuepushwa. Had they pray and who pray for them the thing remains like that. Haijalishi maombi ya namna gani waombe na namna gani kitu hicho kitabaki. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 27 says. Methali 4:23. Keep your heart or you can call it your mind with all diligence. Tunza moyo wako kwa bidii. Linda sana moyo wako maana kutoka kwenye moyo wako chemchem za uzima zinatokea huko. Inaanzia na kile kilichoko kwenye akili yako. Read the scripture in first service Philemon chapter 1 verse 14. Nilisoma Filomoni 1 mstari wa 14. Nikagundua. 
The Bible says. Biblia nasema. Philemon chapter after Titus. Baada ya Tito inakuja Philemoni. Say I can do nothing without your mind. Lakini si paraphrase this way. Lakini si spiritual I find out that God is limited. Kupitia andiko hili nimegundua kumbe Mungu ana mipaka. Pale akili yako inapokuwa na mipaka. God is limited. Mungu anakuwa na mipaka. When your mind is limited. Pale akili yako inapokuwa na mipaka. Philemon chapter 1 verse 14. Philemoni 1:14. Your your mind can limit the hand of God. Akili yako inaweza ikawekea mipaka mkono wa Mungu. Ona namna Biblia King James ilivyoweka. But man will I do nothing. Lakini sikutaka kutenda neno lolote isipokuwa kwa yeah. shauri lako. There was a case in Genesis chapter 11. Kuna swala fulani katika ile mwanzo 11. A tower that reach heaven they call it tower of babel wale wa ndugu wale ambao kujenga mnara kufika mbinguni wanaita mnara wa babel go said uh, i can't stop praying this thing they have imagined to do mungu akasema siwezi kuzuia jambo hilo waliwaza kufanya they stop their mind that they must build kwamba wameamua kwa kwa tatenda na wakaanza kufanya go say uh, for me to stop them Mungu asema ili niwazuie. Let me confuse their language. Nichanganye akili yao. When they started hearing different languages. Walipoanza kusikia lugha tofauti tofauti. They started speaking differently. Watu wakaanza kuongea lugha tofauti tofauti. That was when they changed their mind. Hapo ndiko walibadilisha akili yao. That was in Genesis chapter 11. Hiyo ni mwanzo 11. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. To tell you how powerful is your mind. Hii ni kukuonyesha akili yako ina nguvu kiasi gani. I might not tell all you other ones but pick the message of the first service. Naweza nisikuambie yote ila tafuta ule ujumbe wa ibada ya kwanza. Remember, Kumbuka. Ebova 23 verse 7. Mithali 23:7. The Bible say as a man thinking in his heart. Au navyo mtu nafsi ni mwake. So he is. Ndivyo alivyo. So he is. Ndivyo alivyo. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I want you to understand. Nataka uelewe. Your your mind need the revelation that will be visualize it. Akili. That will make it alive again. Akili yako inahitaji ufunuo itakayofanya iwe hai tena. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor, it does not those things you say it does not matter in the kingdom. They are matters arising. Yale mambo ambayo unasema si kitu lakini kwenye ufalme yana maana sana. They matter what more than you think they matter. Yanakuwa na maana kuliko wewe unavyodhani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are praying for somebody now for 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 for, for healing. Unakwenda kwa mtu kwa ajili ya uponyaji. He or she have made up of his or her mind that no i won't be healed unataka kumuombea mtu yeye ameshadhamiria ndani yake kwamba sitaponywa no matter how you lay la hand lay leg pour oil nothing happens haijalishi unamwekea mkono vipi au mafuta vipi kwa sababu yule ameshadhamiria god is limited when your mind is limited mungu anaikoa mipaka pale unapokuwa akili yako ina mipaka that's why there are certain things you must mind ndio maana kuna baadhi ya vitu unapaswa kuwa navyo makini ili usonge mbele number one of it mind what you think kitu cha kwanza kuwa makini na watu wazi if you think evil cannot touch you evil cannot touch you ukiwaza mabaya hawezi kukugusa hata kugusa think it first and you will leave it next waza kwanza alafu utalishi baadaye a man's life is what his thought made of make of it maisha ya mtu ni matokeo ya kile anachowaza your worst enemy adui wako mkuu cannot harm you Awezi kukudhuru as much as your own unguarded thoughts zaidi ya ile mawazo yako mwenyewe unayojiwazia apart from their mind what number two, mind what you say cha pili kwa makina unachosema let me just tell you the things you must mind in life ni kuambia vitu vya kuwa navyo makini kwenye maisha to, they are related to your essential na vinahusiana na kuepuzwa kwako what you say kwa makina unachosema mind what you say kwa makina unachosema understand that Mountains obey voices. Elewa kwamba milima inatii sauti. Mark 11:23 say if we will say to this mountain. Marko 11:23 mkiwaambia mlima huu. Exhort a breath that we move. Uondoke and cast into the sea. Ukatupe baharini. And he say you shall have whatever you say. Anasema utapata kila unachosema. Mountains obey voices. Milima inatii sauti yako. Psalm 18 verse 44 and 45. Zaburi 18:44 na 45. So to tell you there is a power in the spoken word. Hii inakuonyesha kwamba kuna nguvu katika neno na utamko. As soon as they hear of you. Waliponisikia tu. They shall obey me. Watanitii. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. Wageni watajinyenyekeza kwangu. The strangers shall fade away. Wageni watakimbia. And be afraid in their close strangers. Wataogopa mahali pao pasi. You can speak essential to your life. Unaweza kutamka kuepushwa kwenye maisha yako. And you can speak 
Dishwashing to your life also. Na unaweza pia kutamka kuharibiwa kwa maisha yako pia. What you say. Kwa makini unachosema. Your confession influences your life. Ukiri wako ndio unaamua maisha yako ya wengi. Proverb 18:21. Mithali 18:21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Mauti na uzima viko katika uwezo wa ulimi. They are in the power of the tongue. Viko katika uwezo wa ulimi. Your what you say influences where you stay in life. Unachosema kinaamua utakuwa wapi kwenye maisha. What you say determines what you see. Unachosema kinaamua nini utaona. Big exemption. Tamka kuepushwa. And you will experience exemption. Na utapata kuepushwa. Psalm 92 91 verse 2 where we read in Saburi our Bible. Saburi ya 91 mstari wa pili tuliosoma leo. I will say of the Lord. Asa nitasema kwa Bwana. I will say of the Lord. Nitasema kwa Bwana. Don't say what is happening. Say what the Lord says. Usiseme kinachotokea, sema kacho Mungu anasema. I will say of the Lord. Nitasema kwa Bwana. He is my refuge and my fortress. Yeye ndio kibilio langu na ngome yangu. Kwake yeye nitamtumaini. What are you saying? Wewe unasema nini? Mind what you say. Kwa makini unachosema. In Job chapter 22. Ayubu 22. When others as if you want to be exempted. Unapotaka kuepushwa. Don't say what they are saying. Usiseme wanachosema wao. If your case must be different. Kama swala lako lazima liwe tofauti. Say different things. Sema maneno tofauti. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Look at Job 22 verse 29. Ayubu 22:29. Job 22 verse 29. Ayubu 22:29. What did the Bible say? Let's read it together. Tuseme kwa pamoja. Ha. He said when men are cast down. Hapo atakapokuangusha. What will have thou shall see. Tuseme nini? Utasema. Not, uh, many people don't know this scripture. Watu wengi hawajui ile andiko. He said thou shall see. That is what. Wewe utasema. There is a lifting up for me. Kuna kuinuliwa kwangu. You say to yourself. Unajiambia mwenyewe. Others my no make it I will make it. Wengine hawatafanikiwa mimi nitafanikiwa. They will let my family I will marry early. Watachelewa kuwa wengine mimi nitaoa kwa wakati. Everybody might be poor in this land. I will be rich. Kila mtu anaweza kuwa maskini kwenye nchi hii mimi nitakuwa tajiri. Thou shall say there is a lifting up. Utasema kuna kuinua. Somebody shout a bigger hallelujah. Sema hallelujah kubwa. Somebody shout a bigger hallelujah. Sema hallelujah kubwa. The devil will not allow you to say it. He doesn't like it when you say. Shetani hata kuruhusu useme apendi au afurahi unaposema. That is why whatever the devil does not want you to say. Ndio maana ambacho shetani hataki useme. Double say it. Wewe kiseme sasa. Say it over and over again. Kiseme tena na tena na tena. If I find out that the devil doesn't like me to preach on something. Nikigundua kwamba shetani hataki niubiri kitu. I preach it over and over again. Na kiubiri tena na tena na tena. Say one will be tired. Mpaka nitakapochoka. Somebody shout a bigger hallelujah. Sema hallelujah mind what you say kwa makina unachosema it influences your essential hiyo ndio inasababisha kuepushwa kwako kudhihirike the thought in is mind what you believe kweli ni kwamba kwa makina unachoamini he say in him we lie to us anasema kwa keheni tamtumaini mind what you believe kwa makina unachoamini remember in matthew 9:29 elewa matayo 9:29 the essential is according to your faith kuepushwa kwako kunategemeana na imani yako the bible say in psalm 120 25 verse 1 to 2 Zaburi ya 125 moja na 2 They that was in Mount Zion They that was in the Lord Wa mtumaini wa Bwana They that was in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion Watakuwa kama mlima Sayuni Which cannot be removed but abide forever Ambao hauwezi kuondolewa wakaimara milele Verse 2 As the mountain around about Jerusalem. Kama milima ilivyozunguka Yerusalem. So the Lord is round about his people for henceforth even forevermore. Ndivyo ambavyo Bwana amewazunguka watu wake tangu sasa na hata milele. For the word of the wicked. Kwa maana fimbo ya udhalimu upon the lot of the righteous. Haitakaji ya fungu la wenye haki. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Trust God. Tumaini Mungu. Mind what you believe. Kwa makina unachoamini. What Remember that what you hear determines what you believe. Kumbuka kile unachosikia ndio kinaamua unasikia una amini. Many people wake up in the morning it is radio and television. Watu wengine asubuhi wakiamka moja kwa moja kwenye TV. What they will hear? Watachosikia ni nini? The US has struck Syria. Kwamba Marekani imeshambulia Syria. And this and the team put what they believe. Hili na hili limetokea na mambo hayo yataingiza ndani wataamini hicho. Lazima uamini kwamba umeepushwa na ajabu. What happened to so what happened to anyone can happen to everybody. Wengine wanaamini kwamba kinachotokea kwa mtu mmoja kinaweza kutokea kwa wote. I want you to change what you hear. Nataka ubadilishe unachosikia. What is your source of information? Chanzo chako cha taarifa. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Hear what God says than what man is telling you. Sikia kile ambacho Mungu anasema kuliko kile ambacho mwanadamu anakuambia. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. What to mind? <laughs> mind where you stay. 
kwa makini na unapokaa mind where you stay pia kwa makini unapokaa the bible say in psalm 1 reading from verse 1 to verse 6 Biblia inasema kwenye ile zaburi ya kwanza mstari wa kwanza mpaka wa sita. Watu wengi wamepushwa kwa sababu ya mahali wanapokaa. Na watu wengi wameingia kwenye matatizo kwa sababu ya wapi wanapokaa. Usiseme haijalishi. Wewe unakaa wapi? Unazunguka na nani? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you hang around somebody that's a robber the bullet they want to shot on him might touch you kama unatembea na jambazi ile risasi ambayo ilipiga apigwe yeye inaweza kupata wewe was it saturday or friday or friday the us uh, just sent one into severe just this last two days or three days ilikuwa jumamosi hivi au ijumaa ambako marekani ilitoa onyo kwa syria assuming you stay around that point where they strike the tent labda useme ulikuwa unakaa karibu na ile eneo ambalo unatakusha si inawezekana usijue kinachotokea and the thing will touch you na ile watakalolitupa ni bomb au nini litakugusa na wewe where do you see who are your friends hii ni kielelezo unakaa wapi marafiki zako ni nani watu wanakuona mara nyingi wapi bwana blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly heri mtu yule asiyekwenda katika shauri la wasio haki in the seat of the or standard in the way of sinners wala kusimama katika njia za wakosaji wala kuketi barazani pa wenye misaa kuwa makini wapi unapokaa many people have missed their exemption covenant watu wengi wamepoteza agano lao kuepushwa because of where they stay kwa sababu ya wapi wanapokaa it can mean where you are living it can mean who's hang around you inawezekana ni pale pana unapokaa au unapoishi au wale unaozunguka nao does not matter usiseme jambo hilo alijalishi somebody shout hallelujah sema hallelujah Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Amos chapter 7 verse 7 say Amos tatu tatu. Work together and serve the agree. Wawili waezaje kwenda njia moja wasipopatana? Life love everyone. Katika maisha haya mpende kila mmoja. I don't associate with everyone. Lakini usishirikiane na kila mmoja. Choose your friends and don't allow your friend to choose you. Chagua marafiki zako na usikubali marafiki kuchagua wewe. Many people have died in accident because of the friend they keep. Watu wengi wamekufa kwenye ajali kwa sababu ya marafiki. Watu wengi wako kaburini leo kwa matokeo wanapokaa na nani wanaozunguka nao. Na hivyo wakapoteza ile alama ya kuepushwa katika maisha. Watu wengi wana marafiki. Kama wanapokuja kwenye ibada ile unakuondoka. Yale mambo ambayo umeyasikia leo uwatea ondoa kwa kujua castigating everything done in a church wanapoongea afu na wachekea wanaharibu kila kitu ulichosikia wanachofanya nini kwako they are cleaning the session mark upon your body wanafuta ile alama ya kuepusha usilipo na wanakufanya uwe muhanga because either you are in this apostolic umbrella labda uko kwenye ili mwamvuli wa kitume au uko nje and you have to be connected to be under this apostolic cover lakini lazima ujiunganishe ili uhifadhiwe na huu mwamvuli wa kitume i made that illustration here that if you you are under an umbrella nilitoa kelelezo hicho kwamba kama uko chini ya mwamvuli mvua itakugusa lakini mtu alioko nje ya mwamvuli mvua itamgusa mtu huyo na wewe uko chini ya mwamvuli huu wa kitume watu wengi wako kanisani lakini hawajaunganishwa mioyo yao haijalishi miaka mingapi umekuwa kwenye huduma hii je umejiunganisha kuli kweli sema haleluya Oh you are just coming I'm, I'm, I hate to I hate to hear the word aggrieve in a church na na nachukii I'm angry who will make you angry in a church wengine wanafika wanasema anakashirishwa labda na neno nani atakukashirisha kanisani praise the lord bwana asifiwe and when you are angry you miss your your covering unapokuwa umekwazika au umekashirishwa unapoteza ule mwamvuli wako and finally what to mind na mwisho mind what you do kwa makina unachokifanya kwa makina unachokifanya Isaiah Tertens said to the righteous he shall be well with him he shall eat the fruit of his doing Isaiah tatu kume anasema waambie wenye yake itakuwa heri kwao watakula matunda ya matendo yao your action is a seed matendo yako ni mbegu if it is negative you will reap it if it is positive you will reap it kama ni hasi basi utavuna hasi kama chanya utavuna chanya 
If your case must be different, your action must be different. If your case must be different, your action must be different. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. This one is not winning so, and you join the person not winning so. We have the same result. Someone, someone that is not born again is fornicating before marriage and you join. What is the difference between you and, the, and, and someone that is not born again? Everybody, and you have the language, everybody is doing it. If your case must be different, your action must be different. Everybody is, is, is lying in the office and you join them. You come to work by 12 and you write 8. Unakuja kanisani saa sita, kazini saa sita, alafu unanika saa mbili ndo umefika. If your case must be different, your action must be different. Kama soa lako unataka leo tofauti, matendo yako lazima leo tofauti. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11 and 12 say, he said, have no fellowship with unfruitful work of darkness. But rather, it. <laughs> it is for a shame. It is a shame even to speak of those things which they have done they, they, don't in, they do in speaking. Can you put that scripture in another translation? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11. Can you put it in another translation? Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. But rather expose them. He said, it is even shameful even to mention what the disobedient, obedient do in secret. What they do is even shameful. Most of the time, it is, I say it's shameful even to mention them. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Mind what you do. If you do right things. Evil things will not touch you. I, I, I love this scripture very well. First Peter chapter 10 verse 13. He said, who is he that will harm you? <laughs> if you be followers of that which is good, who is he that will harm you? When you do good, you are exempted from evil. You say, who is he that will harm you? If you are a follower, if you do things that are good, somebody shout hallelujah. Please keep yourself if you want to be exempted. First John chapter 5 verse 18. If you keep yourself, you can be touched. For he said, we know that whosoever that is born of God sinned not. He that begotten of God keepeth himself that the wicked one toucheth him not. If you want to be exempted, from the woes and calamities in this earth. Come on, attack your push on a vita na majanga ya dunia hii. Mind what you do. Kwa makina unachokifanya. Rise up on your feet. Inuka kwa miguu yako. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. Lift up your voice and give him all the glory. Inua sauti yako mpe Mungu tukufuate. Give him all the glory. Mpe Mungu tukufuate. Give him all the honor, give him all the adoration. Oh, ya katapatushi ya balabando lobosha. Eshua kali balabali ando lobolia. Lord, we ask for your grace to activate this covenant of possession. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody bless, shout a bigger hallelujah. If you know you are blessed by the word, shout a bigger hallelujah. Shout a wonderful hallelujah. 
We are going to go into the anointing ministration now. Tunakwenda sasa kwenye huduma ya mafuta. Anointing is one of the ways we at one of the ways we at, activate the covenant of ascension. Mafuta ni njia moja wapo tunalifanya hai lile agano la kuepushwa. The anointing delivers. Mafuta yanakomboa. The anointing breaks every yoke. Yanaharibu kila nira. Everything that represent affliction in your life. Chochote kinachowakilisha mateso kwenye maisha yako. By the power of anointing it is the sword today. Kwa nguvu ya mafuta inaharibiwa leo. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Isaiah 10 27. It shall come to pass. Itakuwa on that day. Katika siku hiyo that there they is and the burden shall be taken away off thy shoulder mzigo utaondolewa begani mwako his yoke from off thy neck na nira yake itatolewa kwenye shingo yako and the yoke shall be destroyed na hiyo nira itaharibiwa because of the anointing kwa sababu ya mafuta this anointing will destroy every yoke of bondage mafuta haya yataharibu kila nira ya kifungo that is a hindrance to you going to your promised land chochote ambacho kizuizi kuingia kwenye nchi yako ya ahadi shall be destroyed in the name of jesus christ itaharibiwa katika jina la yesu but mark the word we normally say holy anointing oil tunasemaga mafuta matakatifu hallelujah hallelujah and if you see Psalm 125 verse uh, 7 i read verse 1 yeah that was in the lord Zaburi ya 125 it shall be like manzayo msaru wa tatu wale watumaini wa bwana watakuwa kama mimi masayuni verse verse 7 msaru wa tatu verse 7 say the word of the wicked shall not rest upon the word of the righteous less <laughs> The righteous put forth their hand into iniquity. Fimbo ya udhalimu haitaka katika fungu la wenye haki ili wenye haki wasije wakajipotosha na uwezo. Sin can neutralize the covenant of ascension. Zambi inaweza ikaondoa lile agano la kuepushwa. Sin can neutralize the covenant of ascension. Zambi inaweza ikaondoa lile agano la kuepushwa. That's why to be sinful. Living a sinful life ndo maana kuishi maisha ya dhambi exclude you from the covenant of ascension kuna kutenga wewe na lile agano la kuepushwa the good news is that you can surrender your life to jesus habari njema ni kwamba unaweza ukatoa maisha yako kwa yesu the good news is that you can rededicate your life to jesus habari njema ni kwamba unaweza ukakabidhi kwa upya maisha yako kwa yesu the season of revival is a season of the fear of the lord as a lifestyle wakati wa uamsho ni wakati wa kutabwana you should walk on a shamely to the altar say god i am sorry kati ambako unatembea madhabahuni pasipo kuona aibu kimwambia Mungu samani. Afichaye dhambi zake afanikiwe katika ufalme huu. Lakini anayeziungama Mungu ni mwaminifu. Je, kuna mtu anayetaka kusema Yesu? Ni sameni nimekosea. Inawezekana ukawa kama yule mwana mpotevu. Namna ambao baba atakukumbatia asubuhi ya leo. How your sins have been. Haijalishi dhambi zako ni mbaya kiasi gani. Mungu ataziosha. Itaonekana kama ukwai kufanya dhambi kabisa nyuma. Utaomba ombili ambalo tutakuongoza. Kama unataka upate maombi haya ya kuokoka. Na wale ambao wanataka kurejea kwa Yesu labda uliokoka huko nyuma. Na wale ambao hamjaokoka kabisa wanataka kuokoka leo kwa mara ya kwanza. Popote ulipoweka mkono wako kifuani. Let me pray for you. Na mchungaji atakuombea. Like Weka mkono wako kifuani hapo na mchungaji atakuombea. Popote ulipo unaitaka kuokoka taka kumpa Yesu maisha yako alafu njoo mbele tafadhali njoo mbele tafadhali usioni aibu chukua hatua ya imani njoo mbele bora weka mkono kifuani tafadhali chukua hatua ya imani tumeshwa Mungu anakusubiri hakuna aibu kumpokea Yesu usioni aibu uleka mkono kifuani chungaji bado anakusubiri I'm still waiting for you to take a step of it. If you are clapping now, uh, it's for Jesus. Do it right now. Clap for Jesus. As you clap, they will come. They will come. They will come. Someone, you want to return to Jesus. You want to say, Jesus, like that prodigal son, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Oh, I have missed it. Forgive me my sin. I am still waiting for you. I am still waiting for you. Come forward, come forward, come forward, come forward. Come and join this wonderful brother wherever you are. And Jesus will be glorified. There is joy in heaven over one soul that repent.
Kuna furaha mbinguni mwenye dhambi mmoja anapotoka. And you that is have fallen begin to ask him for forgiveness. Na wewe ambao ulikuwa na dhambi anza kuomba msamaha. Thank you. Bring out your bottle of anointing oil. And as we are leading him to Christ, begin to anything you desire from this oil is the oil of exemption. Bring it out and begin to pray. Talk to your heavenly man. Make a decree. Remember that what you say is what you will see. Lord, that this oil come upon me, I am exempted from evil. I have resented from sicknesses and diseases. Anything you want, begin to decree. Take a bottle of anointing oil. Father, thank you for this souls. Baba, I cover you him. with the blood of Jesus. Let the grace that save him be with you forever. You are welcome into the family of God. In Jesus' name. Follow our church official. Everyone, bring out the bottle of anointing oil. If you can with one, and begin chupa. to make a decree. You shall decree a thing. And God will establish it. You shall decree a thing. 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 God will establish it. it. Open your mouth. Lord, I am exempted from from sicknesses. What the world suffer will not suffer it. I'm exempted from marital delay. I'm exempted from every form of barrenness. Oh, by this anointing today, that yoke of barrenness is destroyed. That yoke of marital delay is destroyed. That yoke of sickness is destroyed. That disease, you are destroyed. Look to the Makatushika, Lando Bele, Andolia Palaba, Shuaki Ato Shakaba, Lika Tushaka Liaba, Lekato Beli, Katushaka Li, Shuan de Cabo, Shakali, Malaba, open your water and pray. As the oil is coming upon you, the Zenshan Mark is coming upon you. Oh, Bakata Shuba, what others suffer in this town and beyond in your village, around the world, you will not suffer it. You will not crash in any oh, of your journeys. You will not involve in accidents. Oh, rotten dice around you. Oh, shia kaba, leka tusha, opeka tusha, kaboli yaba, shobelando keto libalia, shuali kato shakali yaba, shobelanda katali yaba la ba la ba la ba. Lord, they think when they go from one place to another, from one kingdom to another people, they suffer no man to do them well. He will do things for their sake. Say it, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. By this oil, Lord, let everyone, Lord, be put in the of touch not. No evil is permitted to touch us. Destruction is not permitted to touch us. Somebody lift up your voice and make a decree. Heal! Halaba katoli amabawa! So que tu chacabali a dolobosha, et que tu chacaba, et que tu chacali, que tu chacali et doliba, so vilando que tu chacaliba, so vilando que tu chacalobo, abuando, et que tu chacaboli a dolobosha, ayando que tu chacaboli aba, so vilando que tu chacababa, la cate que tu cotorobo, et que a to que tu chacalabande, a baliba que tu que tu chacaboli, so vilando que tu chacalobo, et que a to que tu liaba, aliando lo boshi a baraba, a que a to que tu, et que to que tu, et que a to liaba, leando lea, so vilando que a to lea baraba, other businesses may fail in this land, your own must be different, oh makata, they might be getting, oh lord, disappointment, your case is different, your case is different, your case is different, oh by the anointing, oh your case is different, oh malando bakato shia kalabaraba, what others suffer, you are not permitted to suffer it. What others suffer, you are not permitted to suffer it. Oh, Allah bakatuli abalaboda. Thank you, Jesus. As you have decreed, so shall it be for you. Lift that bottle up. Father, the content in these bottles. Baba, kitu kilichoko ndani ya ichupa. Are no more olive oil. Si mafuta ya kawaida tena. They are not the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Sasa ni mafuta ya matakatifu ya nyeroku takatifu. And by this anointing. Na kwa mafuta haya. We activate the covenant of exemption upon our forehead. Tunamisha agano la kuepusho juu ya kila kuja. As this oil come upon our forehead. Mafuta haya na pokuja juu yao. Father, let the mark 
of ascension be renewed in our forehead in the name of Jesus Christ. By this oil, we decree no evil will touch us. By this oil, sicknesses and diseases will not touch us. What others suffer, we will not suffer it. Anywhere others have rejected, we will be accepted. Every yoke is broken via this oil. Be a yoke of marital delay, yoke of barrenness, yoke of business stagnation, by this oil, it is broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, as this oil come upon you, the favor of God will answer. Anywhere you go, the favor of God will answer for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone that is sick, as this oil come upon you, you are healed tonight. Anyone possessed of the devil, as this oil come upon you, you are delivered now. In the name of Jesus, anyone in any kind of bondage, as this oil come upon you. You, you are liberated now in the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. It is blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. As any time we are doing anointing, please always do as occasion serve you. you. You can drink it. You can anoint anywhere you want to anoint. I'm not sure you are not disturbing someone on that. Anoint your father. First of all, anoint your forehead and begin Cha to the kabisa, And you do as occasion serve you. Oh Lord, this mark is upon you. you. Anoint your forehead. Put Baka that oil upon you. Everyone, put your hand on your, on your, on your dress with the oil upon your forehead. Put your hand like this. Watch me. Kila mtu weka with the oil kichwani. upon your forehead. Na mafuta ya kichwani kwako. As your hand with this oil. That mark of exemption is upon your forehead now. Witches and wizards will see you and flee. The only person will see you and flee. Anywhere they mention your name for evil, this oil will answer for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray now. You can move it and begin to pray. Shoki toka. Make a decree and God will establish it. Make a decree and God will establish it. Holy cow taka tosh ya alaba. O beke teki ateli abalaba, o beke teki atushi abalabalia, shuan deka atali balia abalaba, o beke toli abalaba, elian deke toli abalaba, elian dolobo shakaba, lika tusha, lika tusha kaboli anda, loba lika toli aba. Take your healing now, take your healing, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Laka toke tusha kaba, lika toli aba, leki shoke toli abalaba. La katen de livo a la va sholo bon da la va. Le ki taka bali da la va. Le ko shia bala bon da la. Bali a bala bali a bala ba. That mark is upon you. Oh my God. It changes your mentality today. What others suffer you are not going to suffer. Go and get married. Go and get your miracle job. Go and that business will prosper, will flourish. No more stagnation. Why others fail, you shall succeed. The stuff that is difficult for others, it shall be different for you. Because your case is different. Because your case is different. Because your case is different. Any church can fail in this land, this church will not fail. Any church can reduce in this land, this church will not reduce. Because our case is different. Oh, Makata Shube Lando Kato Shalabalaba. No evil shall be for you. You shall not die but live to declare the words of God. Nothing will kill you prematurely. The number of your days here will fulfill. Before you have, because you have set your love upon God. Oh, He shall deliver thee. He shall deliver thee. He shall deliver thee. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Let go shaka televa ali avalaba. Elianda katush abalabanda laba, obeke toshika landele boshi abalabalaba, eki toshika shobelando keto shala balaba. It is done. Somebody shout a louder amen. Sema mina kuba. By that oil upon your head, from after your kitchen, Kwako, and the declarations, matamshi, you are exempted forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Your mentality have changed today. Akiliya ko imbadili kaleyo. Think exemption. And you will experience exemption testimonies. In Jesus' name. By the testimonies we had today. Everyone, that whatever medical verdict. By this.
Comme à It is reverted in the name of Jesus. Christ. Somebody shout a louder amen. amen. Wave those hands to Jesus. Have your seat before you stand up. I know many of us came when offering have been taken. And also, we announced today, and we meant it. We did it in first service. As God blesses you, it is for His kingdom. As we want to expand our transport coverage, let it let it your heart, as your transport seat, package it now. And if you are here, you have not given your offering. Before. Please label them appropriately. Na kama uko hapa, Why do we say na people should label? Because you kept those counting, the one that goes for, if you give tight, you didn't label it, they might mistaken it to be offering. And which is not good. Ni muhimu ukaandika kama ni sadaka, kama ni fungu la kumi, kama ni mbegu ya usafiri, ni muhimu ukaandika ili sije kachanganywa kule wanapohesabu. In case we first time are here we package offering this commission in an envelope. Tuna And you write write what it is. Tunaweka mbegu yetu kwenye bahasha, alafu unaandika nini unachoishaje. Kama ni sadaka ya kuabudu unaandika sadaka kwa kweli. And if you don't have tight booklet, we we pay tight with our tight booklet. As you hear the announcement you get to the office and get a tight booklet. Kama ni fungu la 10 andika fungu la 10 pia tuna vitabu vya kutolea fungu la 10 kama una kitabu cha fungu la 10 basi utakwenda ofisini utasaidiwa utapata tu kitabu cha fungu la 10. Mbegu yote unaotoa if it is project prophet of a make sure you label them. Iwe ni mbegu ya namna yote ya kinabii au ya nini kisha unaiandika vizuri. Rise up on your feet. Inuka kwa miguu yako. There are different offerings we give here as God blesses you. Kuna sadaka tofauti tofauti tunatoa hapa kadiri Mungu anapokubariki. Everyone God is blessing you. Yeyote ambaye Mungu anambariki. Do that. Fanya hivyo. Isimame wote tafadhali hata kama una sadaka simama juu. Psalm 20 verse 1. Zaburi ya 20 mstari wa 1. The Bible says I read it in the first service. Nilisoma kwenye ibada ya kwanza. When I was talking about how to activate by when you are a covenant practitioner. Nilikuwa na zungumza namna gani ya kulifanya agano la kutoa leo. Yadi in the day of trouble. Bwana akusikie katika siku yako ya taabu. The of the God of Jacob defend thee. Jina la Mungu wa Yakobo likutetee. Send thee help from the sanctuary. Akuletee msaada kutoka patakatifu. Somebody shout amen. Sema amina. The greatest prayer anyone can pray for you is a prayer of the word. Ombi when you say Lord you read like this is is and we are praying for you ambalo mtu anaweza kuombea ni ombi la neno la Mungu. Said, na ili neno la Mungu anasema Mungu akuletee msaada kutoka patakatifu na kuimarishe sayuni. Na akumbuke sadaka zako zote. Na hata ile ambayo umeshika mkono leo. Aita enda pasipo kupata thawabu. Inue juu Yesu. By this offering your people are exempted from financial calamities. Kwa sadaka hii watu wako wamekufa kutoka financial calamities. Lord, in their finances, it shall be up and off. In Jesus' name. They will pass the basket while we are praising God. And as we are doing that, if you know that today is your first time worshiping with us, please, you come forward to the altar. While we praise God a few minutes, I wish I had a grace. Why are you saying, those, those are worshiping with us for the first time come forward. Choir sing. Choir Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I saw Satan carry behind me. Victory today is mine. Victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today.
is your first time of coming Victory come forward we want to welcome Victory you come on marabu ya kwanza kuja kanisani tafadhali njo mbele we mgeni tafadhali tunakuomba uje mbele continue victory today is mine victory victory victory